Hey, this is Deep Valley, and you're listening to the Bothering the Band podcast. So what's new, guys? Not much. The phone will work if she stays still. This is like this. This is like a movie, but it's like Blair Witch meets Nope. <laughs> and it all takes place on a Zoom, <laughs> a Zoom meeting. Oh, that's the next blockbuster. Somebody write that. Remember Blair Witch? Do the kids today remember Blair Witch? Do they know? I don't think they know. Okay. Do they know about how it changed humankind? I. Forever? We gotta save all. My brain is going. We have to save all this for the podcast. But you're recording already. Yeah, we we started recording. We can use this part. Okay, we'll we'll tag in right at Blair Witch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blair Witch was transformative. Oh, there's Lindsay. Perfect. Lindsay, we were talking about Blair Witch. Did you ever see that movie? Oh my god, so scary. <laughs> but kind of stupid, also. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, what were you saying about it? I don't want to offend anyone. Did you guys make that movie or something? They, they made it. They made that movie. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the the people who did make it came from our hometown of Orlando, Florida. Um, so that's funny. But no, how like how how crazy would it be if that were true, or if we got offended by like your opinion? Of that's my favorite Witch. movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was gonna let the tardiness slide, but Blair Witch. Yeah, you didn't mess it up, Lynn. It's, it's mainly well. I'm trying to remember the part that was the scariest was the end when there's like, isn't there someone like staring at the corner and it's really creepy? Yeah. Aren't there yeah. lots of children's handprints all over a wall at some point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on the the tent because like, like the witch collected children or something. Yeah, that's like a that's a thing. I think. Yeah. Did you guys see that movie, Witch? Uh, the witch that was like spelled differently with W. I can't with... remember. It's like takes yeah. place in the sixteen hundreds. Yeah, something. so good. It's really good. It. And it's she creepy. like eats children too, right? That those witches. Yeah. Like... I never saw that one, but everybody talks about that scene. Oh, she it like looks like two V's. V's. Yeah, it looks like two V's. That's where I was okay. going. Um, and at the, the guy... end, the witches are like elevating by that fire. What I the guy? The guy who who made it has made a couple other like really crazy movies like the lighthouse and oh, i saw that one yeah it's all these like creepy dark you know i really liked that movie because i also really like that time period a lot um yeah. I like period pieces like that but like also like the satan was like kind of looked like a pirate <laughs> which was kind of funny <laughs> that's what i thought he looked and like. he was saying that thing he was trying to like tempt tempt the girl he's like do you want butter and like all the things she would want to tempt her to become a witch like the things that were really hard to get back then do you want butter and i like i like that period as well and there's the movie the village which you think takes place in that period and then you find out it's like an experimental community based in like the 1800s yeah 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 Yeah. never saw that i've heard about that but you know that I feel like that movie was kind of a ripoff. I'm pretty sure I read a book with that like exact same concept um, when I was a kid in school. And I feel like that movie was a ripoff on that book I read. It was a novel I had to read in school about that exact same thing. I'm going to look that up because that sounds like something I would have read when I was a kid. Um, it's so- called Running Out of Time. Is that it? It's it's based on. Is it a kid's a, book or on a book it says here some well of course as soon as i click the link that said the name of the book it's like buried in this article somewhere um i have to point out for the Sorry listeners about my <laughs> wait you're hold on oh good you're not hearing it even okay. no well hold on for the listeners for the first time ever well maybe the second time if you count julie's is that we have a baby on the podcast <laughs> we i can hear the baby burping i didn't hear you perfect. I think it might have been me. Oh uh, yeah, I thought it was a baby. How do you? Yeah, do it I um, witch, baby? It's not based on of... a book. He got accused of plagiarism. Oh yeah, because I didn't remember that book because it was really it was a really interesting concept. Um, that's funny. But yeah, 
baby, my baby's here. And, uh, apparently I, you know, I, I kind of take my kids everywhere with me, like when I can, because it's just, I don't want to have to hire a babysitter, you know, um, they're not cheap in LA. Let me tell you, Wait, he has a lot to say. But yeah, my, I took, I took him to my haircut yesterday and my hairdresser said that he makes really cute. He makes really cute sounds. And then, and then I took, after I got my haircut, then I took my daughter to her haircut at, um, at this kid's hair's place. And the woman was like, you're brave having two kids in LA. And, and I'm like, it's so funny. Cause it's not even a lot of kids, but for LA, I guess. And it's like, People basically look at you like you're a three ring circus when you like walk around town with two kids. Like, I'm not joking. Like I went to Crossroads because I'm like Marie Condoing my house right now. And I went to Crossroads trying to sell stuff. And people just, yeah, were looking at me like I was a three ring circus with my kids in there. I don't think they're looking at you like a circus. They're looking at it like that lady is a badass. How does she do it? These are looking at you thinking, thank God I never did that. No, they're like 20 years old. Are you kidding me? The people that work here? (laughs) And I'm like, I feel like, you know, you're like, I am like, I'm not Gen Z because like, I don't like what these people are wearing and I don't, (laughs) I don't care. Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? But I'm just like, I don't, because I used to work at Buffalo Exchange when I was younger and that was the most fun job I've ever had. And I feel like all the fashion from that era when I worked there, which was like 15 years ago, was so good. But now, you know, but I'm just like, this just means I'm getting older. Indeed. Abby, I, t- I took you to Buffalo Exchange in Brooklyn. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. I don't know. What what are your guys' least, what are your guys' best, like, favorite and, like, least favorite trends that are, like, in style right now with Gen Z or, like, high schoolers? How much time do you have? I know. I'm happy skinny jeans are going away, but I also don't want, like, they're all dressing, like, I, I mean, I should have kept all my clothes from back <laughs> in the day. I could make a fortune with vintage <laughs> clothes right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Julie, what about you? Well, I used to have jeans in probably like 2002 that were literally like two inches above my pudendum. (laughs) They were so low rise. It was like you had some- Is your pudendum where poo comes out of? No, no. I think it's like the (laughs) the front um, non-exciting like part of your- the giant vaginal area like the little come on somebody help me out mo- i think that's called the mons pubis isn't it the mounds okay, pubis. sure sure the mons <laughs> pubis they were like literally just like like just covering the mons pubis oh we all had that girl we all <laughs> had that you, Did you have I, a belly I, button chain like a, a belly chain i never had any body piercings or and Lindsay and i actually you're uh, so smart that you never got piercings. Hot tip, Lindsay and I are the only rock and roll band with zero tattoos. Yeah, wow. that's right. In the history of civilization. The history of civilization. Um, yeah, it was pretty funny. Uh, but I, I know, unfortunately, I did all the stupid <laughs> piercings when I was a teenager. I had to get that adrenaline rush and... <laughs> Now I have all the scars from it. And then just like, that was so dumb. <laughs> Wait, can we, can we go back to the trend thing? Yeah, no, because I, I'll just, I have, a, I had a conversation with my hairdresser yesterday. We were talking about it. Cause I was like, I was telling her about the crossroads experience and like how ridiculous it was that whole situation. And, um, and she was saying that like she was making fun of the the styles and she was saying talking about like the geriatric sneakers and then oh, the yeah, hats 90s, that have like, like white... really bad like b- band names on them like the worst bands from the 90s she's like not even like the good ones like they're like the worst bands. yeah it's like three doors down and you're like okay they're fine like really um we're talking I, about like how there was like you know a lot of good trends from the 90s but it's like why are all the bad ones coming back? i i had this with a, a buddy of mine where i was like yeah it's like not it's not the low rise like super low rise jeans it's like jinkos and like 
Like it's almost like the techno kids went and bought a gap, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, for I'm sure. Really pre- I like it all. I like it all. I really just don't. Hello. I really just don't like um, the, the low rise thing coming back. And I really hate jean skirts, like denim skirts. Like there's no denim skirt that exists. No, they're really cute when you, shape. the high waisted ones from the eighties are super flattering and cute. That's it. That's it. Perhaps. Like Perhaps. the bongo, the bongo oh, skirt. Oh like, no. Wow. Like, bongo. But like the weird, do you remember that style of jean skirt that was like, it's supposed to look like you turn your jean pants into a skirt, like you ripped the seam in the <laughs> and then they sew it right down the. And they're yeah. so weird to walk in. Oh, yeah, no. I no. remember in like in junior high, I got this skirt from Nordstrom, and one of my best friends was like super bummed on me because she had the same skirt from Nordstrom, and she was just like thought I copied her style, and she's like, you know, it's just I don't know why you had to buy like the same skirt as me. Like, there's so many, you know. Like, don't you want your own style? I'm like, <laughs> there's not that many options. Like, we all shopped at Nordstrom at the mall. Like, there's yeah, not that real. many styles there. Back then, yeah. Where's that woman now? <laughs> She's really sweet, actually. She um she has kids and I she has like um we have her on the line right now. Let's, oh let's bring God. her in. Actually, her whole life fell apart because you stole her identity with that jeans. She got into like uh yeah. like uh what's the drug? And now she works at Nordstrom at the mall. No, I think, I think um, fentanyl no, and like... I've seen on Facebook. She has like a baking, she bakes cookie. Like I think she has like a cookie company or something like that. Wow. So she got basic, dude. She got basic, <laughs> dude. Everyone was so basic back then. Oh honestly. yeah. Like I thought I was so edgy because I like listened to the red hot chili peppers, you know, and everyone else liked R and B, but I don't know. I don't know why I thought that made me more like edgy than everyone. Yeah, else. I love how you thought that you were edgy. Like that was like obscure, like an obscure choice. Well, because I was like a rocker, you know, and everyone else yeah. was into like Destiny's Child. But it's funny because like it's just that's that's what was what was uh, but not you know Destiny's Child's probably edgier. I think we're all about the about the I was same way age. into wait what? No, I was gonna say I think we're all about the same age and and. I would have thought you were edgy. <laughs> like the I, love, chili, I love that, that we're chili reclaiming pe- the word edgy because it's chili true. peppers chick. She's edgy. Yeah. yeah the chili pepper, pepper. I lived and died by uh, Radiohead. I mean. Oh, uh, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. So, Julie and I are also, I'm younger than Julie. So yeah. some of the stuff that, you know. He's in a different generation. Than he I probably am. thinks that. Well, I don't know. In my school, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, that meant you were a rocker if you liked them. Because everyone else, yeah, was into like m- music you could like. Hip hop. Freak, and... freak dance too. You freak know, dance, that's what we yeah. called freak, it. Freak nasty. Yeah, I, have a, I have a question for everyone here. I I know I where I stand is, do you mind being lumped into millennials? I'm a millennial for sure. Yeah. I can't be lumped into a millennial because I'm I'm a I'm a gen I'm I'm reality bites. Is it X or Z? I have a weird learning disability where I, I can't think you're too young to be Gen X, Julie. No, dude, I'm not. I am Gen X. I uh, see, I think it's a mentality and it's what you gravitated towards in those certain years. And I see, I don't think I, I really identify with a millennial i think i'm more gen x i was born in 1982 mm. oh yeah. okay you're probably real like cuspy you know i would i still i so speaking of fashion and back to all that jazz i am lucky because i have always worn jeans and flannels and band t-shirts so yeah. anytime that comes back i'm like it's back i'm the same i'm i'm hip again so i'm i was born in uh 86 so oh god so I was I'm definitely a millennial. 78. I was born in the 70s. Whoa. Whoa. They didn't even have cars back then. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So you're talking about your the nostalgia and youth and stuff like that. Tell us a Death Valley Girls story. Share the tea. Oh, Death Valley Girls? Yeah, they're our pals. Um Bonnie, we've hung out with Bonnie at a music festival down here in Florida. She's done the pod. 
Um, great. She's the best, dude. I love They're so them. cute. Yeah, we so played a show nice. with them at the observatory in Orange County, and she's so adorable. Yeah. And her voice, just everything about her is adorable. I know. For <laughs> but I've known Bonnie yeah. since the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were in the same like friend group in the mid 90s. Did she like Radiohead? I don't know, actually. We weren't close, but we were like peripheral. Mm -hmm. And I, I always thought she was so cool. I seriously like remember just being like, if I can just be anything, I will never be. I will never be cool like her. She had this really short like mod haircut with like like little like pin curls kind of. She just looked fantastic like every moment. And like she would have like messy makeup from the day before and just... I just thought she, I was Is in, this in California. Yeah, in LA. So yeah, fun. It must be so messy. cool to like. Really, that's like always you with the makeup from the day before. <laughs> I hate that feeling. I feel like a greasy, like disheveled degenerate when I feel like that. I have to like, but Julie loves that. She loves recycling. Well, I'm not anymore. Those days are over because I have my eyes are too wrinkly, and the way the makeup from yesterday like settles in is not so good. But I when I was younger, get out of here. There were tours when I would just build on yesterday's makeup for literally the whole tour. And by the end of the tour, I would have like three weeks of makeup on my eyes. <laughs> it was great. Punk rock. It's definitely punk rock and not like, I'm just tired. Yeah. Well, yeah it's just like when I was in high school, oh, buddy, I, I used to, uh, I used to go like two weeks without washing my hair and it would be by the time I would like reach, I would, it would get completely matted and dreaded. And then I would have to like brush it. But like, I could just never do that now. Like I would feel so itchy and just greasy and just like, it's just like, I said, like a complete degenerate, like, yeah, but youth, you know, youth lets you get away with a lot. Yeah. I used to wear pajamas to school, like braless, and like think I was so edgy. Like, I, I, there's that word again, but like, but then it's, you do that. The when first time like, we met, you weren't wearing a bra. Yeah, but then I feel like once you enter a certain age, then you just start to look. You can't pull it off anymore. It changes what it actually looks like. Like it's no longer like the beauty of youth <laughs> and insouciance. It's just kind of like, oh, that poor lady. <laughs> She's so I, edgy. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I remember going to getting my teeth cleaned as a teenager. And I was wearing one of my vintage like band shirts and no bra. And I had like my bleached platinum hair. And I thought I was so cool. And the woman was like, probably my age now. And she's like, girl, you got to wear a bra. Otherwise, your boobs are going to sag. And I was like, what are you talking about, lady? <laughs> yeah, that'll never happen. trying to look out for me. <laughs> She's trying to give me, you know, like older, older lady, like advice, woman to woman. Yeah. It's like, girl, get out of here. I'm like, I do not need a bra. In the final analysis, it's like, you should just like sleep in a bra. Like just a bra should always be on at all times. And also like never breastfeed. It doesn't really don't have kids. Either. Either. Don't have children. Don't children. get old. I mean, you got to stay <laughs> like 23 forever. My, my grandma used to like my grandma, my grandma, Shirley. So she, my dad's adopted. So she never had to like birth children. And so she used to, and she had like pretty big boobs, but she used to like, it was a point of pride for her that she would say that she could put like a pencil under her boob and like, it would fall. Like it wouldn't stick there. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's because you never like birth children. Like Shout out to gra after <laughs> grandma Shirley. That's incredible I didn't... Yeah, surely look at see do you see this pinup um this i don't know if you can see it a it's little like, bit yeah it's like a needle point. she did needle point and it says pinup and it's like with a half naked lady that grandma surely did that man sexy yeah that's yeah. pretty dope she was pretty pretty that, that, that was not the baby that was julie wow <laughs> grandma surely would not have been proud of that yeah i don't know Grandma I'm Shirley, like, who does half naked lady needlework, does well, not approve of that. That's true. <laughs> Look, she was like, I would almost say she was like a socialite. Like she was, 
she was like hip, you know, she was like New York girl, like great style, great fashion, throw great parties, like, but she also, of that age group, had the properness, you know? So I remember her her thinking that my sister and I were just like cave women. And she's like always saying, she, she got us a book of etiquette because she basically thought we had no manners, which we didn't. Did you, read, did you say, read that like, book? We thought it was so lame. We're like, grandma, like, we didn't read it. But she used to say at summer camp when she was a girl, they would say, if they caught you with like your elbows on the table they'd say like surely surely strong and able get your elbows off the table and I was just telling my four-year-old daughter that the other day because she was asking me about um etiquette because in one of her prince disney princess songs they were singing about etiquette I think damn it damn my mom used to say that to me wait wait time out because we've asked this before I don't get it I didn't grow up in a household like this what is the point of the elbow rule is it rude is it is it health, like filthy? I think it's improper. Filthy elbows. No, filthy elbows. I feel like get your it, filthy elbows up. It, I think it, it has to do real. with never ever being relaxed in any environment. At yeah, all. sit up straight and yeah. yeah. Don't relax. You are that not safe. sounds so oppressive to me. Yeah, well, it is. Did it? Did anyone here growing up? have to like go spend the night at someone like a friend's house and then you were like blown away by how the other people live not in a bad way let's skip let's skip bad stuff but like i i just told someone this like the first time i went to someone's house it was abby will know this david asher's house and they prayed they said the grace and i was like what do I, I didn't know what, to, I was like, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. It was like that was scene in uh, Meet the insane. Parents where you're trying to say, trying yeah. to say great. Ben still is trying to say oh. great. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also they, it was one of those things that like, uh, I don't think I finished. And his dad was like, you're going to, you got to clean that plate. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sir. Like what the fuck? <laughs> You could have said, sir, that is not intuitive eating. <laughs> Which right. is what That's they do a, now. You would have whooped your bottom with a belt, probably. <laughs> yeah, other, another kid's, another person's kid. <laughs> okay. You ever get yelled at by another person's parents? I got hit by other people's parents. That's crazy. With sandals. Lots of lots of Puerto Rican moms and sandals. I thought you said singles. I thought you said singles. Like it was like a stack of dollar bills. Wait, what what kind of sandals? Like it's just like the slip on sandal. They call it like the chancla or the chancleta, depending on who you're speaking to. So like a thing. I'm loving the specificity. And and yeah, when you get in trouble, they're like whack. Damn. So you're in a lot of trouble if you're on the other side of the room and the shoe comes flying at you, then you're in even more trouble. Because they just threw that shoe across the room. But yeah, I mean, you know. No one should sounds like kids, but this was a different time. And like, yeah, people and got spanked think, and, you know, I'd I go like home and be like, so-and-so's mom hit me with her sandal. And then my mom's well, like, what'd you do? What'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It sounds like intergenerational trauma to me or like. Yes. Yes. Epigenic. I a, feel like it's more, I don't think it was physically damaging. It's probably more, it's, it's more emotionally damaging than physically. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Then you like have that extra embarrassment of like, I was so bad. Someone else's mom came after me. Well, I had the, the, the time I had that feeling. I was at my, my friend's house in junior high and they were from a family of four daughters. And I was taking a shower, like a sleepover. And the mom like slammed on the door and she's like, hurry up. And I was like, felt so like, I don't know. like that, See, that's so weird to me. I felt like, because they were like, I, I was wasting water or whatever, right? But like from my house, like you could take luxurious, you know, long showers. Not at that house. Not when you have that many daughters in the house or using the hot water, whatever. And I felt really, I don't know what the word is, just. I don't know, violated was the word, but like embarrassed, ashamed. Shamed. Yeah. You're like uh, for no reason. Like, like I had that. like I had a weird break with reality at my friend's birthday party. And we were all singing happy birthday. And I like had a weird, like I said, some kind of psychotic break. And I blew out her candles. <laughs> I was like, I was like seven or eight years old. And I don't know, I don't know, man. I just <laughs> And her parents 
were pissed at me. Oh did like, you, I was did you sneak it. it like like that? No, I was I literally I, I was outside of my body and the birthday song ended and I just like did it. And then I was like, no, 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 these aren't mine. Like, why am I even doing What's that? What's that called? Like impulse, not uh, dark thoughts, or there's like a, a well, intrusive, yeah, all of that. All intrusive a... thoughts. Yeah. yeah, intrusive thoughts. I had moments like I had a moment like that when I was younger. That's so embarrassing. So you got but her parents point. yelled at me, like her dad yelled at me. I mean, and I just was like wanted to die. <laughs> I would have thought that was the funniest shit. Who yells? Just fucking light those shits again and we'll do I it again. Yeah, but that's how dads are. Dads are so grumpy. Like when you have, when you're a man and you have kids, like you just become grumpy. That's just like a rule of, it's a law. Of two thumbs down, two thumbs down. I have a kid. I'm not grumpy. <laughs> Never? Not because of that stuff. If I, if I'm grumpy, it's because of mostly work and it doesn't come out other places i'm pretty good at keeping it together i'll rant about like fashion on a teenager but i'm, I'm not gonna be like <laughs> clean up your barbies like i don't give a shit about that i'm trying to break generational trauma i'm gonna try to be that middle person and break it so yes you know yeah. i'm like take his take the fucking longest shower you want i can yeah. Yeah. just eat Doritos for dinner and watch seven hours of YouTube shorts. No, I mean, I don't, I don't really want that, but <laughs> you know, specifically yeah. the YouTube, I'd rather the Doritos than the YouTube. Yeah. It's dark. Yeah. Dark. Doritos. Yeah. I mean, dark I don't, you know, I used to love going to, yeah, it's, every friend's house had such a different culture and like a different vibe. Right. And, but one of my favorite things about staying at my friend's house is, was top ramen well yeah my better. mom is a health nut and everything was whole grain like seaweed miso just very healthy and so i got to like i would turn into a rabid animal when i went to my friend's house and start compulsive eating all their junk food oh my god i was the same i have literally like like a mind palace of other kids snack drawers and pantries like I almost remember nothing from my childhood in my life but I know exactly in every house in every pantry in every snack drawer what is in there like no I don't I do too yeah because I I never had that stuff at home either and everyone oh has so much of it. I'm just craving top ramen right now just thinking about it so good and I didn't even like know the lingo the the lingo I said like to my, I remember saying to my friend, I called it ramen because when my mom did buy it, like I said, it was like buckwheat noodles with like miso and seaweed from the health food store. And so I said to my friend, oh, can we make some ramen? She's like, it's not called ramen. It's called top ramen. Like I was so uncool for like not knowing that, you know, oh, top ramen is just the brand name though. <laughs> yeah. It's still just ramen. Was yeah. this the <laughs> skirt friend? Was no, this is a beef with spray. <laughs> This is a different friend. She didn't say it like that. She she was she's actually really cool. She turned out to be like a really, really hip lesbian that works at the zoo. But she actually her houses was one of the most fun houses. You know what we did there? Her parents would have us um get a pool in the really cool yard. And her parents would have us like do this game where we would collect snails. So they're so smart. They would have like at the sleepovers, they would utilize the free child labor. So they would turn it into a game where like all the kids would have to like go collect all the snails, but, you know, cause they'll like ruin your yard. And I think they did it with like, and then we would pour like salt all over them and then they would all like melt and like foam to death. Sorry, little buddy. You have to hear about snail murder. And I feel like maybe there was like beer involved. Like we would lure them with beer. Do you know that? <laughs> you'd, you'd get like beer and then they would all be attracted to the smell of it and they'd all come crawling to it. And I'm talking hundreds of snails. Like we would put, be putting hundreds of snails into a garbage bag and then like torturing them to death. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, this... with, with salt or whatever, like we had to kill them, right? Like it was emotional torture. You're like, you little bastard. <laughs> you're you're so worthless. Slow. You're so slow. You're worthless. You need but a yeah, I just love that they were able, like the parents were like, yeah, turn like whatever like chores you need to do, turn it into a game with the kids, right? Yeah. How fast can you do it? You're great at it. Yeah, I've seen this. But yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work on my daughter, though. I'm like, you're great at 
doing the garbage. She's like, yeah, get out of here. Um, <laughs> l- let me, let me, because uh, I do have to take my daughter to dance in a little bit. So I, yeah. I want to ask a couple dumb questions, sure. which I'm, I, this has been so much fun. We're going to have to go through the all process again and have you back at some point. Yeah, let's do it. The tour. Because this has been organic and so casual fun. Thank you. But okay, I have a couple important questions. Could you do long division right now without a calculator? But with a pencil and a paper? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. I hope, I think. I'm not sure, actually. It's been many years. Well, this comes from my daughter's getting into that. She's in fourth grade, and I'm like, I got, I have nothing on it. I'm like, yeah, but they might know. do it differently now. They probably they, teach it. that's the crazy thing too. But I don't even know what the old way. There was parts of my childhood where I was like, this, this is gone. I know it. I went all the way to Calc AB, AP. Whoa, Calc. <laughs> fancy. Calc. Don't mess with me. AP Calc, man. man. I don't know, honestly, if I could. I don't know if I remember how. And it kind of stresses me out just thinking about it, to be honest. There's a lot of PTSD from, yeah. from uh, specifically from word problems. Oh, <laughs> because those aren't math. Well, also, now my daughter has to do tests on a computer. So it's like it messes, it messes a lot of them up because it's not like, you know, right. it's like a oh, different skill. Weird. And then you have okay. to, yeah, it's that like, is weird. It's the worst. Um. Did either of you ever work at a place where you had to roll silverware? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Restaurant peeps. Yep. Sure. I did. don't even know what rolling silverware is. So. Ooh, <laughs> Cal KP over here. Is like, yeah, that's that's for peasants. <laughs> uh, it's a napkin, the linen napkins that ref, fan. I don't know. Certain when your silverware is wrapped up. Yeah. Okay. You put mm-hmm. the you put the knife, the spoon, the fork, and then you like fold it in, and then kind of like, like that. Yep, yep. sure did. That gives me PTSD. So. <laughs> yeah, repetitive motion. That will that'll <laughs> kind of that'll mess with your wrists after a while. Yeah, especially with like a twenty five year old quote unquote manager be like, "Come on, guys," and you're like, "You think he's a real adult?" And you're because you're eighteen, and you're like, "What?" Um. Uh, <laughs> Do you say all of a sudden or all of the sudden? What? All of a sudden. All of a sudden. All of the sudden. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of the sudden. I think I say all of the sudden. Yep, see? No, nobody We're split. Even said We're that. split. All of a sudden. Yeah, all of the sudden, definitely. Julie, all We're the split. Because you and I. Die or die. All of a sudden. No. All of a sudden, you just sound like you're you someone who would never put their elbows on the table. <laughs> I'm doing it. Um all these... of a sudden. Yeah, that's my elbow t- grace. Hey, that's table. crazy. I didn't even I never even heard anyone say all of the sudden before. Now I'm gonna have to listen for that. It's gonna bl- it like it it definitely makes you take a beat because I I'm glad you're asking these important questions. <laughs> I'm sure. Phil says it because I say it, and Phil and I are both like from the weird. We have the same weird linguistic things. That all of say. the sudden sounds like hoity toity. All of the doesn't sudden. Phil say milk like me? Milk, um, milk with an e. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he does. He might say it for fun. He definitely likes to say milk weird for fun. Oh, like, like I'll British say bagel. For, that's so fun too. <laughs> bagel? bagel. Let me get a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> for a while, I tried to start saying like milk, and I was just like, this is dumb. I'm just going to own who I am. Like, this is yeah, just stupid. Milk. <laughs> milk is so much better. Milk, and just like, this is weird. I'm, I, I it does his so body happy. good. I'm so happy you guys love that question. Dude, my mom, though, like, she says some wild stuff that she doesn't like she says Marilyn Monroe and like all kinds of weird things <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> that is, that is. That's does like, she say it like ironically no 
Uh, my neighbor says Chicago, and uh-huh. every time I'm like, God damn it. Chicago. I got to go to Chicago for Well, apparently, apparently the color is not mauve. It's mauve. mauve and yeah. I've just been had this pointed out to me. And I, so apparently I always said mauve. And no, I think it's like tomatoes, tomatoes. I think is it's, there? I think. Because it's like taupe is taupe. It's not top, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't mauve be mauve? It's taupe like, ramen. Taupe ramen. It's like, <laughs> it's like tomatoes and potatoes. You know, it's yeah. Like, it's like, but, you know, also my mom says sandwich. Sandwich. So there was all these things I grew up saying that then I would get, like get made fun of and that I had to like change. Um. But then, and and milk was one of them. And then I was just like, you know, screw it. Milk is totally fine. Milk just sounds dumb to me. Just milk. <laughs> okay. Um, Lindsay, Julie, I have to get one thing, important thing out of the, well, a couple of things. One, what Deep Valley song do you want us to end the episode with? Anyone you want, I guess, off of Cistrionics 2.0. Okay. Is there a reason? Is there something else coming after that? Well, Cistrionics 2.0 is the rec- we re recorded it. So, our first yeah, record yeah. is Cistrionics, and we, the label owns the Masters in po- Perpetuity, and we've actually never made any money off that record because oh, of the that. deal we did. Um, so, we re recorded it, and then we put like 10 unreleased tracks, demos, re recorded B sides that didn't get any love. So, it's like a double album. Um, so, Truly, anything you like off of there that you would want to use, you you can. Yeah. Lynn, yeah. which one's your favorite off there? Oh. Um, well, let me tell you, because because we added bass, so I played bass on all the songs on this re-recorded version, and it's heavy, dude. Like, raw material sounds fucking dope. Raw yeah. material? Love yeah, it. Yeah, with bass, yeah. it's dope. <laughs> So that's the first one that came to mind. The other thing I want to ask is, are you doing Desert Days, Julie? Am I doing it? Like, am I working on it? Yeah. Are you going to do it again this year? Is it happening? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, can we do a live pod at Dever- Desert Days? Yeah, let's stay in touch. Okay. Putting you on the spot. I know. But yeah, yeah. Let's stay in touch. Put that in an email to me and, and we'll talk. I will. I will. The other thing I want to give a shout out to Caroline because she's just been the best. Um, we work with her a bit and she's just been you know, ma- making this happen on the back end. Um, I I have to run, but this for the audience, this has been so hard to do. And so it's like, but also so fucking fun that I'm like bummed I have to run. I want to keep I know. talking. But it does give me hope. We're gonna we're gonna do it again. We made it happen. You know, women with children. It's like the schedule just is. Wait, I just thought of something real quick about like the the linguistic the questions you're asking real quick. Mm-hmm. Truly, do did you guys? Well, you, are any of you the people that mix up the spelling of desert and dessert? No, because I'm a writer, so that would be real embarrassing. Yeah, because because uh. I, I'm not either, but my fiance the other day, he's, he's like, was he's like, his spelling sometimes is a bit questionable. So he was asking me, but Julie, do you guys ever think of doing a desert day spin-off like dessert days Ooh. and having it like a festival? Yeah. We've talked about it a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Dessert days. I love being desserts, like an element so. of desert days where there's like, you know, oh, lots of cookies, pop up dessert chefs or something. Yeah. I'm because food that. festivals, because Julie and I played a food festival in Mexico and it was so fun and the food was oh, so yeah. delicious. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I know you have to run, but. No, no, no. This this is long time in the making. I was getting all sentimental, so I'm happy you cut me off. Uh, this has been a long time in the making, but certainly oh. so appreciated. If, like, oh, my God, the baby's here. Julie's been burping. We got so much like without even forcing questions. We got so much. We got to know them so well um, mm-hmm. that I I really want to make this happen again. Oh, let's do it again. I it's like actually- reliving these like, these weird childhood memories. I'm ha- I'm I'm really into that. Yeah, solidarity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's perfect. All that's of a sudden. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No. 
Uh, well, thank you guys so very much. Yeah, thank you. We'll we'll send you Thanks, everything. Guys. We'll talk to you soon. All right, okay. sounds good. Okay, bye. Thank you guys. Thanks, yeah.